This is the first video about a geography lesson in Terminal called Urbanization Trends and Issues. Because we will focus a lot on the trends, the lesson will mostly be about cities in the Global South, because this is where change is happening now. As an introduction, I would like to say a few words about the definition of a city. It's not a very precise term, actually, in geography, in the sense that Depending on the country, the exact definition of what a city is and uh, how far it's different from a village or a town, it's very uneven depending on the type of country we are, uh, we are in. A city in China does not mean the same thing as city in France. Okay. In China, you may have villages are populated by tens of thousands of people and it, they will still be considered rural. So um, the good news is that figures in this lesson will not matter that much. A city has a double characteristic as a place. The first and most important characteristic is the idea of concentration. A city is a place where people, buildings, economic activities, and so wealth, are concentrated. The concentration of buildings is what makes a city visible in the landscape. The other element is the role that cities play in their environment, in their region or their country. And logically, they play the role of a hub hub for transport and communication. So they have a leading role on larger areas. They have an influence. So they, they've always been places of importance, but their importance has been increased by the processes of industrialization, modernization in general, and also globalization more recently. Part one will mostly focus on describing and explaining why an urban boom is happening now in the global south. So by urban boom, I mean simply that the number and the share of people living in cities has been increasing very fast uh, all over the global south. And uh, this high pace will have a very big influence on the issues we can uh, observe in the cities of the South. So in part A, let's describe an uneven but rising urbanization in LEDCs. A few words about the graph that you can see now. It illustrates the fact that uh, an incredibly important event happened very recently. In 2007, for the first time ever in the world, in the history of mankind, the number of people living in cities has overtaken the number of people living in the countryside. And so it, it has put an end to millennia of domination of rural areas in, in numbers of people. Um, of course, this is the, the result of a very recent process at the scale of uh, mankind's history. Um, the change in human settlement really started at the end of the 18th century with industrialization in Western Europe and it has accelerated after 1950 when this process of industrialization started to spread in the rest of the world, so in the Global South. Now if we look at the lines, uh, we can see that uh, in real numbers the number of people living in countryside areas has not started to decrease. Actually, it, it is peaking at the moment. But the number of people living in, in cities has increased much faster. Of course, one of the fuels of these lines is the population growth that the world has experienced very intensively during the last decades. This map gives us the big picture. It shows the, the urban rate, the share of 
population living in cities in all the countries of the world and it is uh, obviously and at first glance a map well, which looks like the map of uh, levels of development and indeed on, on this graph which is very theoretical but I think rather uh, inspiring you can see an explanation of the strong connection between economic development and urban rates and there seems to be uh, almost a, a model which is that uh, the more a country is economically developed the more urban it is this is largely true not entirely true though because we can see in particular in the global south um, contrasted situations so if we go back to this map uh, MEDCs all show a high level of urbanization only Eastern Europe maybe is slightly less urban well it's also slightly less developed but uh, it's above 80 percent everywhere the uh, the global south is is very different it's much more contrasted and actually I think we can observe that the contrast in urban rates are bigger than contrast in um, economic development the exceptions being um, Latin America Latin America is more urban than the rest of the global south and not only because it is more developed it's also more urban because of um, colonial history and the fact that uh, a large part of the human settlement in this area of the world um, dates back to European colonization not that nobody lived there before but many of the uh, pre-Columbian civilizations were destroyed and in particular the rural ones so uh, the Europeans arrived and, and, and built cities and started to govern the countries uh, from there the Middle East and North Africa are, are also rather urban because uh, it, there's a link with aridity when water is scarce uh, people tend to concentrate only where water is the result is rather high urban rates and so um, the rest of the global south is much more um, rural Southeast Asia is uh, a bit less rural notably because of population density which is very high uh, China is changing very fast well has changed and is still cha changing and so it leaves uh, two areas sub-saharan Africa and South Asia so mostly India which are still more rural than urban and after this extremely impressive special effect um, I'll show you a new map unfortunately it has the same color scheme as the previous one so it's only shades of blue but the meaning is different it's a map about urban growth rates so the darker a country is the faster is urbanization happening in these countries that's the reason why the countries that are mostly rural uh, rural sorry uh, have high growth rates today because they are changing they are facing the the the, the fastest changes and uh, they are faced with the the biggest issues obviously so that's the case of sub-saharan africa and uh, quite a few countries of of asia if we uh, focus for a couple of seconds on western africa you can see how impressive the urban boom has been actually many cities that uh, today host inhabitants in Western Africa did not even exist in 1950 and now a short series of maps which um, which indicate the megacities of the world um, technically speaking megacity is a city with more than 10 million inhabitants on, on these maps you will see uh, cities of more than 5 million inhabitants 
and you can see some graphs on the right which are uh, very clear and instructive. So that was the world just after World War II, well, 10 years after World War II. Very big cities almost only existed in, um, in the north and, uh, and only in Europe and North America did uh, city dwellers dominate. Then in 1985, so 30 years ago, 35 years ago, the, uh, the distribution of very large cities had already become more global because uh, many cities uh, of this type uh, now existed in Asia and in uh, Latin America. It did not mean that Asia was already a, an urban continent. It simply shows that this is where you could find the largest number of very big cities. But do not forget that Asia is far more populated than any other area in the world. And this is nowadays. So in fact the trend uh, has been confirmed. The number of very big cities has really boomed. All continents are concerned with the, the issue of megacities now. Asia uh, has the lead and uh, Africa also has megacities now. So I like this um, uh, title which illustrates well the, the current situation. African growth fastest, Asian growth biggest. Uh, it's a good way to summarize uh, changes in human settlement in the world today. Fastest in Africa, biggest in Asia. In both cases it makes things difficult to handle. And that is the uh, a map which is still about mega cities. Now only the real ones. Um, and uh, yes, for most of them, they are around 10 million. What is interesting with this map is that it shows prospects. What will be the biggest cities in 2030? And uh, here you can see some impressive growth that are predicted, notably in Africa. Um, and uh, you can also see the relative stagnation that big cities of America or Europe will experience. With one extreme example, the example of uh, Tokyo, which is the only mega city that will see its population decline. It's not particularly linked to Tokyo exactly. It's, it's the result of population decline in Japan in general, which will be the object of another lesson. There, there would be a lot to say about this graph, about the growth of urban agglomerations. So we could also say urban areas, which means a, a city and, and its suburbs. Uh, I like it because you can compare trends uh, of um, quasi stagnation for, for London. We are speaking about Greater London here, and it does not include uh, the entire metropolitan area of London uh, and uh, contrast uh, with what happened in Lagos, Nigeria for example. Uh, I also like this graph for its flow which is that you contrast numbers really. Uh, you contrast numbers because uh, nobody knows how many people live in Lagos today Nobody knows, notably because you don't know what is the limit of a city today. And uh, well, it makes figures a bit, um, a bit non-significant to a certain extent. There will be two case studies along the, the, um, the lesson. One about Mumbai, uh, the most global city in, uh, in, uh, in India. It's on the west coast. The other one about Lagos, Nigeria, which uh, is also a coastal city like Mumbai, which makes comparison um, simpler. 
and uh, they are both faced with with the same same process but not exactly at the same time so again and again i will refer to these two cities in particular <laughs> 